A very good afternoon to all of you. I'm Ankita from NASCOM and back with the second episode of the Go to Market series with an amazing topic, social selling. I have with me Amar Shet, VP of Customer Success in Sales for Life. An amazing and intriguing topic to hear today. Welcome, Amar. Hey, Ankita, and hello to everyone. Yeah, and before I hand over to you, I have two more things to say. Please ask questions anytime during the session, and Amar will cater to them as and when he will read them. Second, please uh, leave your feedback at the end to help me better my future sessions. Over to you, Amar. Excellent. Um, good afternoon to everybody in India. I'm based in Toronto, Canada, so it's a very early morning for me. It's 5 a.m. I'm an early bird, and I'm glad to be here with all of you. Now, before we begin, Let's do a quick sound check. If you can hear me, if the sound quality is good, please let me know. Go to the question box right now on GoToWebinar and let me know if you can hear me a-okay. I'll wait for a few of you to confirm. Please go to the question box and let me know if you can hear me. And Ankita, you may have to confirm if you see answers coming in, because I'm not sure if I can. Answers are pouring in. <laughs> okay, excellent. So Ankita, it looks like you're going to have to be the moderator because I'm not able to see the question box, okay? So we'll pause momentarily for questions, and Ankita, you'll help me moderate, okay? Fantastic. Okay, team, so let us begin. Uh, a quick agenda for today. We're going to discuss what is this term social selling. It's fairly new to the Indian market. Why does it matter? We're gonna talk about, and this is where the training is gonna be highly focused, building your digital online brand and being customer centric at the same time. And then of course, there'll be Now, if you have any questions, keep them coming in via the question box and then we'll go from there. Quick introduction, my name is Amr Shed. This is my email address. You can contact me at any time, but most importantly, you should connect with me on LinkedIn because this is the go forward digital business card of salespeople, okay? Guess what happens to the business cards that you leave behind in your sales meetings? They're pretty much thrown out, right? So do yourself a favor and get yourself on LinkedIn if you're not there and send me an invitation. I would love to connect with you. Just let me know when you connect with me that you're coming through from the NASCOM webinar, all right? So that's me, that's how you spell my name. I am that good looking in life. And yes, we're gonna begin now, okay? So, Sales for Life, we're a global authority in this space. I'm not showing you this slide with a bunch of logos to brag, but I'm showing you this slide to impress upon you the fact that some of the major organizations in the world are now starting to train their salespeople and use their salespeople in a digital manner. This is how salespeople need to get accustomed today. This is not just about cold calling and cold emailing anymore. You have to bring social media and digital tools into the mix. On this slide, you will very quickly recognize two major Indian logos. Tata Communications is there and Mindtree is there also. Of course, if you have any questions on this, you can let me know. The reason social selling works is because there's so much information online and you as a sales professional are able to basically boil it all down and connect the dots for customers. If you can do that today, you have a strong shot of being chosen as the preferred vendor. Now, <clears throat> before we go into our training, I wanted to talk for about five minutes or so on why this topic of social selling actually matters. So what is this term social selling? What does it mean? Why does it matter? And for this, what I thought I'd do is, I thought I'd start to give you some examples throughout history where human beings and human civilization have transformed through technology. Okay, so this is not just about social selling, my friends. This is very much a topic about disruption. And the first example I'll give you is in the United States. You know, in the 1700s, all the way up to about 1860 or so, when the American Civil War happened, the primary way with which human beings generated light was through whale fat oil. Well, there's only one way of getting whale fat oil. And human beings were killing, on average, about 20 to 30 to 40 million whales per year in our oceans. Can you believe how inefficient this process is? Well, it took a Canadian to come up with an idea of kerosene, <clears throat> which wiped out the entire whaling industry in less than 30 years. 
And here's another example for you. In the year of 1893, on the streets of New York City, these are actual pictures, by the way, of 1893 in New York, there were 200,000 horses on the streets of New York. Can you imagine, my friends, what 200,000 horses did to the streets of New York? Imagine what you had to step through. Imagine what the streets smelled like. This is what people had to deal with. And it took 15 years for the automobile to come. And then horses were wiped out. We went from 200,000 down to 10,000 horses. And I'll give you a modern day example, if I may. I'm sure everybody in India, at least, I hope at least, has heard of the Hyperloop, right? The Hyperloop is a Canadian patent evangelized by Elon Musk, funded by Sir Richard Branson of Virgin. And it's actually now called the Virgin Hyperloop One. It's branded after Virgin. But this is actually coming to market in 2022 in Dubai. The transport minister of India is actually begging Elon Musk to take land in Maharashtra and to test the Hyperloop. Because with the Hyperloop, human beings will be able to transport themselves very quickly. Right? I have an example for you directly from the Hyperloop website here. You know, between Melbourne and Sydney in Australia, which presently takes about 11 hours by car, we're going to shrink that time to less than one hour. In India, this would mean Mumbai to Pune in about 18 minutes. This is real, my friends. This is coming. Mumbai to New Delhi in about 70 minutes, not the 15-hour slag overnight on the Shatabdi Express, right? So ultimately, this is how technology is going to change civilization. My question to you as all sales professionals is this. Given all of this flux, given all of this disruption, don't you think traditional sales can be disrupted with the phone? Because this is how we're selling today. We are the frustrated salespeople, okay? And I'm gonna give you all some data here. Let me take out my fancy pink pen. The global average right now for cold calling is 2%. That's it, that means for every 100 phone calls you make, only two people will answer the phone. And for email, it's about the same. It's also about 1.8, I'll round it up to 2%. Now, in your region, it might not be exactly these numbers, but ask yourself these questions. Is the world becoming more digital or less? You know, because buyers aren't waiting for us by the telephone, right? If you think that your job is to cold call 50, 80, 100 times a day just to get attention, I'm not saying cold calling doesn't work, by the way. 2% is still a number that works especially if you sell large size deals, right? But there has to be another way to get attention because this is how buyers are now learning and purchasing, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you some data here. Some of you might find this a little bit shocking, but I hope not. According to IDC research, three quarters of all B2B buyers are now using social media to research vendors. Not, not just Google, but actual social media to research vendors. 90% of buyers are not responding to cold outreach. I think that number is probably more like 98%, okay? And here's a very famous statistics. 57% of buyers are done their research process before they even reach out to you as a brand or as a salesperson. So a lot of salespeople look at this data and they get worried. But the good news is still the following, that 74% of buyers are choosing the salesperson that's first to add value and insight. Now ask yourself this, just pause for a quick moment, okay? We know that the bulk of research is done online. We know that buyers are using the mobile and kind of online platforms to do that research. And we also know that three out of four buyers are choosing salespeople that are first to add value and insight. So the question is, where do you think these salespeople are? Are they just cold calling and cold emailing? No, they're online. They're increasingly going online. So if you as a salesperson are not online, if you just have a LinkedIn profile and you think you're a social seller, you're not. There's something you need to do now as well. I'll show you some more data. This is from LinkedIn directly from a study that LinkedIn did just about two years ago. LinkedIn asked the question to about 1,500 uh, buyers, 1,500 B2B buyers, they said, what is your, or who would you prefer to work with? What type of salesperson would you prefer to work with? And out of five choices, 
92% of people said, I prefer dealing with the salesperson that's a thought leader. Again, ask yourself, are you selling in the right way? Okay, and I'll give you some more data here very quickly without bugging you. Our own data indicates, this is my firm now, our own data indicates that salespeople that use LinkedIn and other platforms in the sales process actually generate 55% more pipeline and 38% more revenue. So either way you slice the cake, either way you look at this data, it is crystal clear that social selling, which means the ability to use social platforms is working and it's benefiting us as salespeople. All right, now very quickly, let me basically just define what social selling is because there's lots of definitions out there. I'm not saying that your definition is wrong, but you know, there's so many definitions and it's really not a good idea to function off of multiple definitions. Let's all get anchored and grounded in one single reality. So I'm gonna give you that definition right now, all right? So social selling is a place to build relationships that ultimately drives revenue. If it doesn't drive revenue, it's just social media. It's not social selling. I can't begin to tell you how many times I hear my students say, well, Amr, I have a LinkedIn profile and therefore I'm already social selling. No, you're not. I'm sorry to break the bad news to you. Just because you have a LinkedIn profile, just because you think Facebook is a cool place, just because you think Instagram is really hot, doesn't mean anything. You have to use these platforms in a way that salespeople use them, which means it has an intended purpose, and that purpose is to drive sales, okay? And always, you use this as a complementary strategy. At no point in time do I advocate or recommend or suggest that you give up cold calling or cold emailing. Those things still work, but you have to start using other tools and challenges like this in your sales process, all right? So I hope this helps. I hope that basically gets everyone grounded. Let's do this. Let's actually take a quick 15 second pause. Please, right now, go to the question box and let me know if you have any questions or feedback. Even if you don't have any questions, go to the question box and let us know. Are you enjoying this session so far? Is this valuable? Amar, I guess now you are able to have a yes. look at the question box. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, Anjan is asking, how much do you give value, value, value and, and introduce the sales pitch? Anjan, great question. There is a formula for this. Unfortunately, Anjan, we are not going to be completely able to go so deep into that topic today, but stay tuned. I will talk about that. Abhishek is asking, do you have some data around social selling is successful in fintech industry? Abhishek, that's like asking, is cold calling effective in sales? Is cold emailing effective in sales? This is not about any particular industry, my friends. Doesn't matter if you're selling to manufacturing or finance or insurance or banking or automotive or retail or internet or consumer products. Take the industry out of your mind. That question was asked in North America about seven years ago when VPs of sales were asking, does this work in my industry? That's like asking, does the mobile phone work every single day? The, the answer, of course, Abhishek is yes, right? And I hope I've, I've kind of articulated that. Um, so far, so good. Uh, Vedvrat, I think, uh, I hope I've said your name correctly, my friend. Um, yes, of course, it works in the financial industry. Fa uh, Facebook, no. Twitter, no. LinkedIn, yes. I agree. Um, Ulhas is asking, can you throw some light on Sales Navigator? My friend, unfortunately, not today, but I will show you enough to get you excited. Um, Anjan, again, LinkedIn is the best. I would really advise all students to avoid, uh, to avoid Twitter. It is a diminishing and diluting platform. Um, Ashish, I hope you got your answer. Ankur is asking, I tried a lot on LinkedIn, but was not very effective in Asian markets. So Ankur, it's never the medium, it's always the message, okay? So I don't care how you guys go to market. You can go to market by telephone, by email, by carrier pigeon. You can send a messenger boy to someone's cabin to take your cold calling pitch. It's never the 
media. Uh, it's never the medium. It's always the message. Uh, last question from Pra uh, Praveen. What should a salesperson do apart from networking on LinkedIn? Like what should be the content strategy? Praveen, great question. Share every day. Share content every day. That's my solution and that's my answer to you. All right, team, I'm going to have to move on. There's so many questions coming in. Let me just take one last one because I can't help it. Um, so actually, let me take two more. Uh, Satabji is asking, oh, sorry, Satabdi, I hope, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I apologize. How, um, how do you balance social media distraction and leveraging its effectiveness? Very easy. You only use tools like LinkedIn. That's, that's the easy answer. Because if you're using tools like LinkedIn, and specifically if you're able to afford it, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you can basically shut out all the garbage and all the noise that exists on social platforms. Hemant is asking, is Sales Navigator useful? In, in one short word, yes. Um, okay, let's move on. There's so many questions coming in, guys, and I'll, I'll keep on addressing them as time goes on, okay? Now, let's do this. I want to talk today about building your online brand. Here's the reality. This is some unpublished data that most people are not yet aware of. There is a one of the world's biggest research companies is technically very, very friendly with my firm. And one of our friends there has shared some data. This is now the latest statistic of over 10,000 B2B buyers. My friends, this is the percentage of buyers now visiting the LinkedIn profiles of salespeople. Now, again, it might not be exactly this in India or wherever you're selling, but this is a global average. This number should excite you, but it should also scare you. Because what this means is that buyers are coming to your LinkedIn profile, and that should make us answer three simple questions. What should our LinkedIn profile say? Should our profiles be resumes? And the third question, I apologize, is repeated, you know, how do, you, how do we want to portray ourselves? So my advice to all of you is this. I want you to rip up your entire LinkedIn profile. I know this sounds like shocking to some of you. I know this sounds like crazy news, but this is the reality. Unfortunately, the majority of salespeople, the way we're using LinkedIn is we're using it as a resume or as a CV. This is the wrong way to use LinkedIn, okay? Ask yourself, does your buyer care? Now, this little macho man here, flexing his muscles, this was me about seven years ago. Seven years ago, I used to brag on LinkedIn on how phenomenal of a salesperson I was. I used to say things like, I'm a quota crusher. I've made President's Club five years running. I'm always in the top three of every sales team that I belong to. Now, these are fantastic accomplishments. I'm absolutely proud of my accomplishments, but there's one problem. You know what that problem is? My customer, my prospect, my buyer, who is traditionally a sales leader. Okay, so wait, you might sell to a CMO or a CFO or a CHRO. I sell to a sales leader, a VP of sales, okay? My sales leader customer does not care about my accomplishments. This is unfortunately the reality. So the question you have to ask yourself is, does your buyer care about your sales accomplishments? Because I guarantee you, there's about 138 of you online right now. If I were to visit, or 139, someone just logged in. If I were to visit some of your profiles right now in real time, your profiles would be sales letters. And that is the wrong way to start delivering value. Because remember, if your, if your LinkedIn profile is a resume, you're effectively targeting a recruiter. You're not targeting a buyer. And what I want you to do is keep in mind that roughly two thirds of all buyers at some point of the sales cycle will start to visit your LinkedIn profile. How do you want them to feel about you? What do you want them to feel about you? Right? So here's my advice. Buyers need to feel like they're looking into a mirror when coming to your LinkedIn profile, which means you have to use your buyer's language on your LinkedIn profile. I have a very simple example for you here. I took a CIO that I found on LinkedIn. His name is Toby, as you can see. Now, if you were to visit the CIO's profile and read it, you would basically learn that there's one single term that he uses repeatedly, and that term 
is business transformation. Everywhere on his profile is that term business transformation. Now, just for examples, okay? If you sold to chief information officers and one of them or two of them or three of them liked the term business transformation, don't you think you should also use that term on your profile? Don't you think you should start speaking value directly to your buyers? Do you see what I'm saying? Right? Now, one of the biggest questions that is now asked is, Amr, I get this, but LinkedIn is so big. What part of the LinkedIn profile do I actually adjust? Do I modify? Well, here's the good news. Based on heat mapping data that we're seeing from LinkedIn and third parties, we know, and that you can write this down if you wish, that there are only five key areas of the LinkedIn profile that are viewed the most. That's it. This is it. Over 90% of the viewing time on the LinkedIn profile is done on the photo, the headline, the summary, the recommendations, and the activity. That's it. There's nothing else really that matters. So if you are in sales, as I'm guessing most of you are, then that is where your focus should be, my friends. So I'm going to give you some tactical training and guidance right now on how to basically adjust and modify your LinkedIn profile properly. Now, give me one quick second as I switch to the browser and I want to start um, getting a best practices document ready as well. So let me show this to you right now and let's just kick off the discussion. First best practice that I can give you is this. Know the keywords and your buzzwords that customers use and care about. Now, you don't necessarily have to go to their LinkedIn profiles to get this. If you're in market every single day, if you're on the phone every single day, if you're in your industry for more than probably two, three years, you know, you probably know what the heck is going on. You're, you're a smart individual, I trust that. But what I'm saying to you is, now it's time to translate that in all of the key areas that I outlined, okay? So that being said, let's jump directly into the LinkedIn profile. And the example I wanna show you today is of one of my top students. This is Jeff, okay? Jeff is based in Minneapolis in the United States, one of my top students. And I want you to observe everything that I'm showing you on his profile and take really good notes, of course, all right? So first things first, the first highest viewed place on the LinkedIn profile is the photo. There should be no surprise here. All of us naturally are curious to see what each other look like, all right? So let me share some kind of best practices for the photo with you right now. So let me go to that right now and let's discuss it now. So here are the four simple best practices for your photo. It does not have to be more complicated than this. First, this should be a head and shoulder photo. This is always the professional choice. If you have a photo where you're cropped out, where you're doing a selfie, where someone's hand is on your shoulder, by the way, if you're holding alcohol in your photo, bad, bad, bad idea. This is not nice, okay? Someone has to change your photo for you then because you're probably not <laughs> capable enough of doing it. Joking aside, please make smart professional decisions, my friends. This is your professional profile. This is your digital online business card. This is where the bulk of your buyers are going to visit, all right? Secondly, your photo should be high resolution, which means not cropped, not fuzzy, non-pixelated. Now, here's the good news. If you look at Jeff's photo, this is actually taken with my iPhone, okay? I have an iPhone X or iPhone 10. This is taken with my iPhone. So if you have a smartphone in your pocket, that's a relatively good smartphone with a fairly good camera, you too can take a good professional photo. The only thing you have to do is you have to ensure great lighting and please smile, please smile. I don't know what it is about our culture in India, but most of us don't like smiling. Don't do that. Smile in your photographs, it's always a nice thing. Even if you have a weird smile like me in my LinkedIn profile, do it because it'll help you, okay? So joking aside, this is an important thing, all right? Good photo, because this is the highest viewed place on your LinkedIn profile. Secondly, this means that your background cover photo should be there as well. Now, if you have, if you work for a company that has a kind of branded, company branded background LinkedIn um, photo, use that. 
it's always nice to get a background LinkedIn photo. And I'm gonna show you an example of that right now. Okay, uh, give me one quick second right here. You see that? This is a professionally branded background photo on LinkedIn. This is a sales leader and this is directly um, his company. All right, now Jeff is using one from his industry. He's in the hotel and he sells to the hotel industry. So he's got like a hotel key card. Be wise, okay, in the, in the photos that you use. All right, so that's the first highest viewed place on the LinkedIn profile. Now the second highest viewed place is right here. This many of us call the job title, or this is where we put the job title. The official name for this is actually called the LinkedIn headline. Think of it as a newspaper, right? You look at a photo, the photo grabs your attention. If the photo is good, you start reading the headline in the newspaper, okay? So what do you want to say in your headline? So think about what Jeff is doing. He's inserted his title because he has a sales leadership title. He has a fairly senior title, director of sales. But in addition, he's got this fancy phrase. Now, you might have also seen many people include a, a, a fancy phrase like this in their LinkedIn profile. The question is, is what they're doing good? And what should your fancy phrase say? Well, let's actually call it for what it is. This is not just a fancy phrase that you include a bunch of random words. This is a value-based headline, okay? It's a value-based headline. So I'm gonna give you some really good insights here, which is on your screen right now. So the key question that I want all of you to answer is this. What value do buyers achieve by working with me and my company? That is the fundamental key question. What value do buyers achieve by working with me and my company? Okay, and as you answer this question, I want you to use action-based keywords. Examples are enable, assist, empower, help, drive. I have students that use fancy words like unleashed. Whatever it is, express your personality. Okay, so let's look at, and by the way, very, very important, this is where you start to use all of those keywords and buzzwords that will immediately resonate with your buyers. So let me show you Jeff's example. So his kind of action-based keyword is enthusiastically. Enthusiastically helping independent hotels drive better revenue using advanced analytics. Now, you might this might not make any sense to you, which is fine because you're not his prospect. Independent hotels is the actual industry that he serves. What does he help them do? He helps them drive better revenue. That's an actual term from the industry. I didn't know that, you probably don't know that, but better revenue is a very commonly used term in the hospitality and in the airline industry. And how does he help do that? Using advanced analytics. Now Jeff's company is uh, a division of SaaS, the big analytics company. So ultimately, this is the type of headline that you should have. A value-based headline that is answering a very simple question. What value do buyers achieve by working with me and my company? All right? All right, I hope there's no other questions around that and I hope that makes sense. Okay, now team, very important. So far, let's just recap what we've learned. We've got the photo and the background photo as the highest viewed places on the LinkedIn profile. Number two, second highest viewed place is your headline. Now let's move to the third highest viewed place, which is the summary right here. Okay, now again, think of this as a newspaper. You look at a newspaper, the photo grabs your interest. It also makes you read the headline. If the headline is good, you're now going to read the article. Well, this is the article. And it's a shame why many salespeople don't pay attention to this. So let's analyze the best practices of the summary, and then let's come back to Jeff's summary, okay? Team, I'm gonna be taking questions in just a few moments, so just bear with me. Just bear with me on that, please. All right, summary is this, okay? The ideal length of the summary is about 100 to 150 words. Now, 150 words, in my opinion, is even way too much. You should ideally try to keep this to 100 words or below. Does this mean you have to work in thinking of an idea? Yes, it does. Remember to also use your voice. People are buying from you. 
They're not buying from your company. So as tempting as it is to copy and paste something from your company's website or from a blog, don't copy and paste, all right? People want to hear from you. So if I'm, I'm gonna use some of you as examples here. If I'm Abbas or Ashish or Ankit or Joel or Kashik or Kiran or um, Manish or anyone on the call right now, I'm going to make sure that I'm speaking in a language that I'm comfortable in. This means that I'm using language and terms that I have used myself in my sales meetings. Okay? And Kieran is asking, what's the attention span of a potential buyer on your LinkedIn pro profile? Kieran, no surprise, it's very, very, very short, meaning that your summary should be about 100, maximum 150 words. Be impactful with the words that you use. Team, you don't need to be a literary genius to write your summary. All of you have a special gift. You're all salespeople. You have all been put in your positions because of your strengths, because of your gifts. Have some confidence, my friends, and just write the way you talk. It's okay if it's not 100% grammatically correct. You don't need to be completely 100% accurate. Just speak in your own language. That's my humble request to you, okay? And the last best practice is include rich media assets. LinkedIn allows you to basically include blogs, articles, uploads like Word documents, PDF files, etc. My advice to you is you can do all of those things, but as you and I both know, the majority of times all of us are watching videos online, right? So try to find some corporate videos from your company. Try to find some industry-specific learnings or teachings that you can include in your LinkedIn profile via the video channel. Okay, um, uh, Vedvrat is asking, should summary and headline focus on what we do for a company or the value we can add? It's 100% what value you can add or your company can add for the reader. Do not talk, talk about what you do for the company. Everybody already knows you're in sales. You don't need to advertise you're in sales. Okay, so Vedvrat, for instance, is saying, I work in marketing, but my company domain is product for banks. So Vedvrat, I would basically gear my LinkedIn profile as a marketing professional talking about the work you do and how it helps building products for banks. Okay, Samir is asking, doesn't it make our profile too salesy? Absolutely not, Samir. Samir, where have you been, my friend? I'm saying exactly the opposite. Samir and my friends, let me kind of summarize this once again, okay? The job of your LinkedIn profile is not to talk about your sales accomplishments. It's to talk about how you and your company can add value to the customer. So Samir, if you think that is too salesy, then don't you think your sales meetings are too salesy? Okay, I hope I've made my point. Karen is asking, how do you differentiate yourself from others? I'm sure there's tons of people using this method. Actually, Karen, there are not. In, in our estimation, there's less than half a million in the world out of 22 million B2B salespeople, okay? Um, quirky notes, or sorry, quirky quotes, quirky messaging, and quirky headlines, they all work. Just team, here's the reality. Express yourself, use your own voice. If you have a bad sense of humor, express your bad sense of humor. Clearly, all of you can see that I have a bad sense of humor. Right, so I, I speak with it, I go with it. That's my personality, okay? Amit, I'm gonna show you the videos in just a quick second, okay? And now let's do this and let's go back to the summary here. So, a couple of things. Let's analyze Jeff's summary. Notice how this is actually written in his own words. I'm passionate about helping hotels drive better revenue by incorporating pricing signs. This is directly speaking in his language. Do you see that? His opening sentence and his opening paragraph is speaking in his tone, in his language. Now, everything after that, he's no longer saying, I was, um, I was number one salesperson on my team. I hit my quota last quarter. I made President's Club last year. Instead of that, and I'm speaking to Samir and everyone that maybe has a similar question like him, think about this. He's geared his entire LinkedIn profile, and, and right now we're on the summary, to talk to his customer. 
He's not selling his customer. He's simply letting them know, if you're here, this is how I can help you. And look at the language that he's using. He's directly using the buyer language. Optimizing a hotel's business demand, forecasting a hotel's transient and group business, integrating guest ratings, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't understand or if you don't get what Jeff is saying, that's absolutely fine because you are not his prospect and I am not his prospect. His prospect is a VP of revenue management in a hotel, preferably an independent hotel. So he's very much calling out the type of people that he's targeting. Okay. Um, uh, Umang is asking, what measurable stats can be used in judging the success of social selling? Umang, my friend, you missed the early part of the presentation. I would advise you to watch the recording, which I'm sure Ankita and the fantastic NASCOM team will make available for you. Um, Umang, you may also contact me on LinkedIn, right? My name is right up there. Send me a LinkedIn profile. I can send it to you as well. Okay, so team, look, that's the summary. A couple of other things, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to be visiting Jeff's profile after this call, okay? He, he and I are, are, are kind of battle testing a couple of things. One thing we're testing is including keywords. So we're testing the inclusion of client names on the summary. You don't have to do this, this is optional. And again, here are other keywords we're including in our profile as a test. We're trying to determine and test the SEO value, the search engine optimization value within the LinkedIn search bar. You don't have to do these parts, but you know I'm letting you know in case you visit his profile. The other thing is Jeff is including his contact details. Again, this is optional, but if you are going to leave your contact details, my advice is leave your work number. Absolutely do not leave your mobile number. There's too many funny people on the internet it's a bad idea. And, and, and again, especially if you're a sales leader or a leader of any kind, marketing, sales enablement, sales, if you're listening to this, do not leave your contact info. You will thank me for that, for that recommendation later. Okay. And lastly, here are the rich media assets. In the edit section of your LinkedIn profile, under the summary, you can include rich media assets. So what Jeff has done is he's included a couple of videos here that automatically play. These are YouTube videos directly about his company. Okay, so team, these are rich media assets. Some of you might be asking, Amr, do these videos actually work? And the answer is, yes, they do. We know they work because we've tested it. I personally have taken a test just last year, and I'll give you my example. Last year, I put a video on my profile. It was advertised nowhere else. It was set to private mode on YouTube. It was not on any blog, on any website. It was simply on my LinkedIn summary. And guess what? In less than a year, I got over 10,000. In fact, it was almost 11,000 views on that video. So friends, this absolutely works. All right? So, so far, we've gone through three of the top five most viewed areas of the LinkedIn profile. Team, at this point, we're about you know, two thirds of the way through the training. I wanna pause for a quick moment. Let's just check the pulse. How's everybody doing? Are you enjoying this session so far? Or is, do you think this is valuable? Do you think this is helpful? Do you think this, this is the worst thing that you've heard in your life? Please go to the question box and share your feedback with me. Amit, yes, the videos are from YouTube. Team, feel free to share your feedback if you're enjoying this session so far or if you have any feedback about it. All right, fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay, so let's go let's go back into the presentation, okay? Now, the fourth highest viewed place is absolutely going to shock you, but it should not shock you. Okay, now look, let's, let's just start from the top again. So far, someone has seen your photos, right? They've seen your headline. They've seen your summary. So now the mind thinks that they're basically chronologically scrolling down, or they might be looking at these sections like people also viewed. By the way, are people looking here? Yes, they are. 
but are they stopping here to read? The answer is no. And I can tell you that based on data. This is not my feeling, this is fact, okay? This is thousands and thousands and thousands of data points combined to produce this output for you. Now, the fourth highest viewed place, look, they're actually scrolling past your highlights, they're going past your experience, they're actually going past your education, your volunteer experience, your skills and endorsements, and they're stopping right here. They're stopping at your recommendation section. All right, they're stopping at your recommendation section. Why do you think buyers are stopping at recommendations? Can anyone tell me? Go to the question box right now and please put in your answer. Why would someone care to look at your recommendations? I'll give everyone about 15 to 20 seconds. Please go to the question box and let me know. What are people looking to achieve when they read your recommendations? Why are they stopping here? Why do they care? So Praveen is saying word of mouth. Naresh says references. Vandana says for validation. Anand says credibility. Somia says, by the way, is this the same Somia that I trained at Juniper Networks back in the day? If so, let me know. Uh, Somia is saying social validation. Um, Indrani says, like we look for product reviews before buying a product. Um, Sagar says trust factor, so on and so forth. All of you are correct. All of you are 100% correct, okay? Janet is saying a quick snap about the person. Uh, Amit says something very nice, which I like, which is it's similar to star ratings, okay? So all of you are right. All of you are absolutely right. Now, I'll tell you, that LinkedIn's product team is actually thinking of shifting this section from the bottom right to the top below the summary. And I, I can also tell you that LinkedIn is thinking, again, we have sources inside LinkedIn, so I'm, I'm giving you some inside gossip, right? You can call me like, I'm like the coffee of Karan with, uh, with social selling, right? I like to gossip about this stuff. And, and right here, I can tell you that they're thinking of changing this section's name from recommendations to professional reviews. Now think about that. LinkedIn is finally catching up with the rest of the world. And what they're saying is, wait a second, Amazon uses the term reviews. Google uses the term reviews. Yelp uses reviews. TripAdvisor uses reviews. Glassdoor uses reviews. And here we are using the word recommendations. That's a little bit weird, don't you think? So my friends, here are some best practices I'm gonna give you right now on the recommendation section. Hopefully this should not surprise anybody, okay? Now, if you're in sales, this is 100% applicable to you, but not just, any sale, not just all sales roles. If you're a BDR or SDR, this is not applicable to you. But if you're a, and by the way, also sales engineers and solutions engineers and solutions consultants, this is not for you. But if you're a account executive, if you're in inside sales, if you're in channel or partner roles, all of this is applicable to you. Okay, so the recommendations best practices are, you need a minimum of five buyer-based recommendations. If you have transacted with at least five people and five companies in your role, you need to get LinkedIn recommendations from them. And the way you do that is you offer ideas to those you're requesting, okay? Now, let me give you a, let me give you a perfect example right now, and I'm gonna pick on someone here, and I hope, uh, I hope she doesn't mind. Okay, so Ankita, I'm gonna pick on you. So let's go to Ankita's profile, and I am there right now, okay? So look, I'm on Ankita's profile right now, and let's say Ankita was my customer. I've sold her a deal. She's now my customer. Now, how do I ask her for a recommendation? So here's what I would do, okay? Under the more section here, there's a section that says request a recommendation. Now, this is the mistake most salespeople make. Well, not this. So how do I know a relationship? I can say Ankita was a client and this was my title while she was my client. Now, here is where most salespeople make the mistake. They will basically just hit the send button here. This is not right. So what I'm asking you to do instead is I'm saying, write something like this. Hey, Ankita, it's been great working with you for the past few months. As the world becomes more digital, our recommendations are seen more. I'd be honored, sorry for the American spelling, but 
I'm a Canadian used to America now. I'd be honored for a LinkedIn recommendation from you. It's been a while since we've talked. Here are a few things that you may want to consider adding. Okay, point one, I helped increase pipeline for your sales team by 18%. Two, LinkedIn usage has tripled. Three, you saw an increase in speed to close. Um, by the way, team, I'm completely making this up, right? But I think all of you understand how to do this. So Irfan, when you ask the question, you know, well, Irfan is saying the best way to get a recommendation is to give a recommendation. Irfan, yes and no. That, that works sometimes, not all the time. However, um, the best way to get a recommendation, Irfan, is to make sure, and this is advice for everybody here, recognize something. Your buyer is busy. Listen, I'm going to give you my own statistics. When I get recommendations from VP of sales, who are my customers, I have to know and understand that they are busy people. Meaning if I send them a generic LinkedIn recommendation request, guess what? They now have to think about it. And if a busy person has to think about something, your request just got moved to the back of the line, to the back of the queue, which means that if you give them insights or you give them ideas, they are very, very likely to take your ideas. All right. So my recommendation for all of you is as you ask for recommendations, give direct insight. Use the keywords and buzzwords that you want your buyers to familiarize you with. Okay. So again, if you look at Jeff's recommendations here, the, the, he's got five recommendations. He's, he's working on getting more, right? By the way, his sales cycle is 18 months. Like this is an enterprise deal that he sells. So that's why he only has five right now. But long story short, um, these are actual customers. These are the people that he sells to. So ask yourself this, right? If you were a VP of sales coming to my LinkedIn profile, and you saw a recommendation from a former leader or former manager saying something like, Ummer is hardworking and he's very dedicated and he's so committed and he's the first one to the office in the morning and the last one to leave and he's super honest. You might say, well, okay, that's great, I think, but isn't that just standard? Shouldn't everyone just do that? Compare that recommendation with an actual recommendation from another VP of sales that I have as a client which may say something like, Ummer helped me increase pipeline. Ummer's sales training helped me increase the number of deals that we closed year over year. Ummer's training did X, Y, and Z sales result because that's what I specialize in and that's what I want to be known for. So now you've basically turned your recommendation section into massive and free public relationships, okay? Hope that helps, by the way. Okay, so that is the fourth highest viewed place on the recommendations. Now, the fifth highest viewed place goes back to a question that was asked much, much earlier. And let me take you to the fifth highest viewed place now. It's all the way back up here in this section called articles and activity. Basically, what people want to see here is if you claim to be an expert on the topic that you care about, then are you actually sharing content about their topic? Because if you're not, it doesn't seem right. So if I claim to be an expert or at least knowledgeable or at least have some level of idea on the topic of social selling, and if I don't share content around that topic, that's a little bit odd, right? So this is why people are again looking at the articles and activity section as a proof, as a credibility builder. You don't necessarily need to write your own articles on LinkedIn, okay? You can if you wish, but some, some companies have a corporate policy of salespeople not doing that. So please know your social media guidelines and don't blame it on this you know, crazy Canadian here. But ultimately, you have to understand that sharing content every day should be your goal. You should find one helpful article that your buyers may find interesting all the way to valuable. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of my world famous drawings here. Okay, imagine there was a spectrum here. Okay, and on the left it was somewhat interesting. Okay, to highly valuable, highly valuable. You need to share content every single day somewhere along the spectrum. You don't need to even read every single word of every single article that you share. But the key is that you have a good enough insight to share that article with confidence. All right, my friends, that is the top five areas viewed on your LinkedIn profiles. All right, I've gone fairly fast. So here's my question to you. Well, let's open it up for Q&A, shall we? So if you have any questions right now, please, let's open it up for question and answer. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions related to this or any other side questions you have on LinkedIn, even LinkedIn Sales Navigator, whatever the situation may be. So let's open it up for questions and I will take them now. And by the way, if you don't have questions, please let me know. What's your feedback on this session? Is this a good thing? Do you think NASCOM should repeat more of these sessions? Would you like to learn more about social selling? Was this valuable? Was this helpful? Did you walk away with actionable strategies to implement immediately? Sun, uh, Sudeep, I'm sorry, I said Sandeep. Sudeep is saying, I usually share content on LinkedIn and Twitter in one single click, and it's a great practice. Fantastic, Sudeep. I completely agree. Swapnil says, is it mandatory to have Sales Navigator for using LinkedIn for social selling? Uh, Swapnil, that's like asking, is it mandatory that you have the latest Mercedes GLE 350 to get from point A to point B? I would like a Mercedes GLE 350, Swapnil, if, if you'd like to gift me one, but it's not needed, my friend. Listen, I'm going to say something here. It's going to seem completely off color, and I hope all of you can forgive me in advance. Our job as salespeople is to use the tools we have. If you have LinkedIn Sales Navigator, fantastic. If you can afford it, double fantastic. If you can get it and afford it and use it, triple fantastic. But if you don't have it, you can still use the free version of LinkedIn to generate at least 80% of the results as your Sales Navigator colleagues. Okay? So I wanted to let everybody know that. Uh, thank you, Iqbal, for the kind comment. Manish is asking, should we send follow-up messages to prospects on LinkedIn? Follow-up to what? Follow-up to prospecting messages? Follow-up to connect, Manish? The answer is generally yes. Manish, that's like asking, should we follow up in sales? Absolutely, we should. Absolutely. But Manish, remember what I said at the start. It's never the medium. It's always the message. All right, Ankur is asking, or saying rather we need to have more sessions like this. Fantastic, thank you. Um, Jay is asking, how can LinkedIn help in selling educational institution placements? Jay, that's a fantastic example. So one of my clients, Jay, and I actually teach at York University here in Canada. So I'll actually show you that right now. Um, York University is using social selling right here um, to basically get their salespeople to sell educational placements, to sell uh, senior leadership training, all of the above. It's just sales at the end of the day, Jay. That's all it is. Uh, Junkie's asking, how can we become a thought leader? Any tips? Yes, talk often, talk a lot, and share your ideas. That's it, there's no, no other science. There's no other science. Um, Hemant is asking, we need, or thank you, Hemant is saying we need more sessions on social selling. Um, Sony's asking, the objective is to build trust, right? Absolutely. Listen, this whole game is about trust building. The more credible you can seem online, the more value you can bring people online, the more wanted you're going to be. Okay? The, the biggest thing fighting all of you today, your biggest enemy in sales today, okay, and this is not my statement, but I'm going to write this down for all of you, okay? Your biggest enemy in sales today is obscurity, okay? And that is from Grant Cardone, okay? If, you, if, if people don't know you, you don't exist, all right? Um, Praveen is asking, did we miss skills recommendation? Um, 
Praveen, the skills section is actually no longer in the top five. It used to be, but no longer is. Uh, Hemant is saying, elaborate on the mining techniques. Hemant, we don't have time today. Um, Santosh is asking, why is Sales Navigator costly? Is it suitable for startups with small ticket sizes with a month closing sales cycle? Santosh, hard to say. Is it worth it? Yes, it will absolutely speed up how fast you can do things. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have time to go through that. And Santosh, if you can afford it, you should try it for three months. Okay. It's a good investment. Santosh, you will probably spend more on movie tickets and, and useless lunches, not you, but salespeople in general, um, than on Sales Navigator. I would rather we invest in our career versus our, you know, uh, our, our chai biscuit, okay, uh, every single day. Vandana is asking, when we message people on LinkedIn, I have not seen that working. Unfortunately, Vanda, that has to do with the messaging that you're probably using. So unfortunately, we just don't have time to cover that today. Uh, Anand is saying, I hope we have a second part of this. We'll see. Uh, Kishore is saying, I want to learn more on lead gen. Okay, we'll try to make that happen. Sudeep is asking, how can we build our LinkedIn network and how do we kind of fast track this? Very good question, Sudeep. Share lots of content. Make sure it's for the target intended audience and tag people inside that content when you share it. That's probably one of the fastest ways to grow your network. Iqbal is asked, wow, the questions are nonstop, guys. I'm glad you're enjoying this, by the way. There's no way I'm gonna get through all of this, Ankita, but I'll do my level best. Um, Iqbal is saying, can you share something about LinkedIn algorithms? We can get tools? going for another 10 minutes. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fine with me. Uh, can you share something about LinkedIn algorithm or tools to enhance one's visibility? Um, unfortunately, Iqbal, not today. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Just we're short on time. Um, Anjan, great question. Would you use social selling for B2B and any tools you suggest for social listening? Anjan, I would use social selling. LinkedIn is not it. It's more Facebook and Instagram for B2B. Okay, or I'm sorry, for B2C. And Anjan, also for social listening, there is a deadly tool out there, which I'm going to show all of you right now. It's actually called nimble.com. It, it, they almost advertise themselves as like a CRM, but they're not. It's a one-click Google Chrome extension where when you click on someone's profile on any platform, it will get all of the information about that person and bring it in one window for you. This is a killer, killer tool. Uh, I think they also have a free trial as well, Engine, so you may want to try that. Uh, Fairoz is asking, do articles that I share about my company need to be specific to my company or the products or services um, or any new technologies? So Fairoz, this is a broad question. The topic should be something about what your buyer cares about. So Fairoz, it could be something as simple as, hey, you know what? I'm in the market every day. I keep on hearing this one sales objection every day. Let me just write an article on it. And now I'm going to preempt that objection. So now when I'm prospecting, I can send my prospects an article which says, hey, you might have the following concerns. Check out this great article I've written for you. Uh, Prashad is asking, what should be the script while connecting the prospect on LinkedIn? Unfortunately, no time to cover that today. Um, Vikas is saying NASCOM is doing great by arranging this. I agree, Vikas. NASCOM is awesome. High five for NASCOM. Uh, Jay Jagdish, please send me a LinkedIn invite. If you want to invite me to your institution in Bangalore, uh, we can certainly talk. I'm based in Canada, so we'll have to figure out how you're going to get me there. Um, oh, Jay, you're giving me your email. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Jay, you can also message me on LinkedIn. I kindly request you to do that. Um, Indrani, unfortunately, no time for lead gen and messaging today. Uh, uh, Suman's, or, is it Suman or Sumana? I'm not sure. If someone has tagged me on LinkedIn, or sorry, let me reread that. If someone has tagged me on content, how do I see it? You actually see it right through your notifications right here. So when you're tagged, you'll see it through your notifications. Okay. What should be the strategy for accepting LinkedIn connection requests? Iqbal, very, very good question. I want all of you to respect your LinkedIn network. Don't just let any Tom, Dick, or Harry into your network. 
Remember, this is your digital business card. And by the time you retire, let's assume you know you retire at 65, okay? LinkedIn estimates that the majority of us will have anywhere from 10,000 up to 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. So it's very critically important that you don't just get everybody in your LinkedIn network. Be very, very selective. Aleem is saying, can you name some great sales leaders? In, in what area, Aleem? That's a, too broad of a question. Vimal is asking, great question from Vimal, by the way, how important is the company LinkedIn page to be active and up to date? Very important, Vimal. This is your corporate landing page. It's like asking Vimal, should you have a website for your company? The answer is, of course, yes. And imagine if your website was built in 1997. Of course, it's time to update it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Murali, Murali, can you please connect with me on LinkedIn? Uh, and I'm happy to help you however I can. I'm just going back in the comments. Would like to hear more sessions like this. I think project management and service teams should also be included with sales. I agree. Anyone that touches the customer should be included, Ashish. 100%. Fully agree with that. So Santosh is asking a great question, and maybe we'll end it here, team. Okay, I hope that's okay. Um, maybe I'll take one more after this, actually. Question, any tools for LinkedIn to automate these growth hacks without using Sales Navigator? Santosh, my friend, as awesome as automation tools are, they are 100% against the rules of LinkedIn. If LinkedIn even smells the fact that you're using a growth hacking tool, they will eliminate you faster than you can blink. Do not use any automation tools, my friends. I've seen too many of my students get suspended, and I mean permanently suspended off LinkedIn. And this is such an amazing prospecting tool. Please don't jeopardize that, okay? So that's my humble request to you. So Samir is asking, is there a way to reconnect with the prospect if he or she has declined uh, once before? And if so, how would you suggest? So Samir, if they've declined you before, you probably won't know because there's no way for you to know. So the best way for you is to socially surround that prospect, engage with them online, like, comment, and share on what they're saying, okay? Tag them inside things, pull them into conversations, get to know them, and then once they get to know you, they'll connect with you. The LinkedIn connection is not a joke. It is a very sacred, sacred thing. Do not take advantage of it, any of you. Uh, Indrani is asking, what works better, a good company page or a good CEO profile? Indrani, that's like asking, what's my favorite dessert, ice cream or cake? And both are important. Okay. Uh, Sumana is asking, how can you do business or sell to someone without adding them to your network? Um, I don't know, Sumana, and I've never seen that happen. All right. Okay, team, we are well over time now. So I really appreciate if all of you can please reach out to me on my LinkedIn profile, uh, especially those of you that want me to speak to your teams or anything like that, please definitely reach out to me on my LinkedIn profile and uh, we shall go from there. Ankita, any parting words before we end today's call? Yeah, Amar, it was an amazing session comprising great stats, infographics, what exactly social selling is. Now for me, social selling is when one generates revenue to drive sales. And even now, I'm going to make few tweaks to my LinkedIn profile as well. And thank you for waking up that early. And thank you for your time and effort, Summer. Thank you so much. It's my absolute pleasure. Hey, team in India, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful and positive day. It's Amr and the NASCOM team signing out. Take care. Yeah, and uh, for the audience, I just want to tell you that on 21st of May, we are coming up with another session, which is on so value selling. On 24th of May, we have uh, bringing personalized and proactive experiences to the digital world. And on 30th, we have mobile tech tips for easier device support. For more info, please visit nascon.in slash events. Thank you, everyone.